for me, taking things personal is assuming responsibility for someone else's will or perception. To not take it personal is to no longer take responsibility for someone else's will or perception. It's their way of seeing things. Right. All right. So I started. I, I accept that I take things personal. I accept and I understand. And the funny thing is my dad taught me how I take things personal. He was talking about how teaching. One day, we, him and I are, are um, giving a presentation in Rochester, New York, back in 2009. And our host puts us up in a very nice hotel in Rochester, New York. So when we finish the presentation and we're kind of tired and in front of the lights, we're, we're, we're a bit sweaty because you sweat underneath the lights. We walk in and there's a restaurant where everyone's dressed very nice and elegant. And my father says, hey, let's go eat. And I said to my father, let's go upstairs and freshen up because I see that everyone's dressed nicely. And I'm not, I'm dressed up, but I'm not dressed nicely. I'm, I'm, I can feel the, the pr presentation we just gave. Let's go upstairs and freshen up so we can look presentable. That's what I said. And he says, okay. So we go upstairs. I go and I take a quick shower just to get rid of that film. And I'm preparing myself. I'm dressing myself up and I look good. I'm like, yes, that's me. I go down the elevator waiting for my dad and his girlfriend at the time. And they're not down. So I'm sitting there. I'm standing waiting and I'm dressed nice. They're dressed nice. I fit in. Perfect. I look good. Yes. Then all of a sudden, the elevator doors open, and out comes my dad dressed in his pajamas. And I'm going, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> He's trying to teach me something. Yeah. And I start doing a little mantra to myself. Not going to bite. Not going to bite. Not going not to give in. Not going to give in. So when he comes up and he says, is there something wrong? And I said, nope. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so let's start walking. And there is, he's walking in front of me in his pajamas. And I'm walking behind him. I'm 30 somewhat years old. I'm 33 at this time, 33 years old. And he's making me feel like a teenager all over again. At least I tell him myself, he's making me feel like, no, I'm feeling it. I feel like a teenager. There's no dress code. People are dressed nice because they want to dress nice. There's no sign that says suit and tie, whatever. So when the hostess comes up and asks for table of three, like my dad says table of three, she says, no problem, walk this way. There's no problem. There's no problem. But she decides to walk down the middle of the restaurant. And I'm walking behind them so I can see everyone turning their heads to look at him. And I can hear, what's he wearing? Oh, my gosh, look at this red bandana. And I'm like really getting super self-conscious, like a statue of salt. I'm like, it becomes really hard to walk because I'm so embarrassed. When we get to the to the to the booth that uh, the hostess had chosen for us, my dad looks at me and says, "Is there a problem?" And I said, "Nope." <laughs> Are you sure? Yep. I'm still doing my mantra. Not gonna bite. Not gonna bite. Not gonna bite. I'm sit down. And my dad grabs this menu, and he forgot to bring his reading glasses. He, he put on his pajamas, but he didn't bring his reading glasses. So he's like this, and he's squinting. He's trying. To... So his girlfriend lends him her glasses. Yeah. He puts it on, and there's different prescriptions. So his eyes kind of bug out, and I'm going, I roll my eyes like a teenager. My dad sees it, and he pounces. He goes, what's wrong? And I said, Papa, come on. This is... This is a nice restaurant. People here are dressed nice. And here you are dressed in your pajamas. You look like an eccentric guy, like Howard Hughes or something. Papa, it's embarrassing. But that looks me straight in the eye and he says, Miguel, do you disrespect me so much that you think you have to pay for me? That you don't think that I can pay for my own consequences myself, that you have to pay for me? Do you disrespect me that much? And with that, I'm like, oh, wow. I am. I'm a, it's, he's the one wearing the pajamas. Why am I mortified by his actions? And then I realized that part of my conditioning or domestication was birds of a feather fly together. I tell you who you are by who you hang out with. But the big one was whenever I was throwing a tantrum, in order for my mom to control me, to stop me to, from making a tantrum in public, she would say, look, Miguel, look, that boy, you see that boy over there? He's looking at you. Aren't you embarrassed? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Compose yourself so you don't look bad in front of him. 
And it tell you it worked because I see it, I look at the boy, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm trying to control myself, and that's how she got me to stop me from throwing a tantrum. You can say that's the root. And it's a, such a root that as I grew older, you better not embarrass me. You better dress so cold so I don't want you making me look bad. And there's the trigger. There's the trigger that makes me take things personal, and it's the trigger that makes me domesticate someone else. Don't make me look bad or else. All this happened, all this realization happened as my dad says that. And I look at my dad and I says, Pop, you're right. Forgive me. I, I, I did take it personal. You're right. He said, good, let's keep eating. You know, let's go, let's, let's order. Because that's all he really cares about. He doesn't really care. So that's how we became aware that I take things personal, among other things in life. So, all right. It starts with accepting I take things personal. Then I read the book and I learned what not taking things personal is. So now I get to get to know myself. What triggers me to take things personal? Well, besides my dad wearing pajamas and um, other things in life, uh, there's people posting something on Facebook. All right. I can't control when my dad puts on pajamas or not. I can't really make him put a pajama every time we go to a restaurant in order for me to try this out again. So I log on to whatever social media I scroll down and there's the name of a person that usually makes me want to go grr. Things, someone that makes me take things personal. I scroll down a bit more. It's a doozy. At that moment, I've already accepted that I take things personal. I've accepted that I, Miguel Ruiz Jr., take things personal. Yeah, exactly. So at that moment, I log down. There's the name of the person. There's the, there's the post. And at that moment, I have the choice. If I take it personal, it's because I want to take it personal. Because I've already accepted that of me. I, Miguel Ruiz Jr., take things personal. And that's that's what unconditional love is. Unconditional love except is accepting the whole of who mm. I am. Yeah. And I've read the book. I read the concept. And I'm free to say yes to not taking it personal. That's what personal freedom is. I'm free to say yes to taking it personal and yes to not taking it personal. And with that awareness, I choose not to take it personal because I don't want the hangover that comes with taking it personal. And that's that's how you begin to practice something. You practice it by recognizing one in yourself, the trigger. And once the tri- when you recognize the trigger, when life is happening, you have a choice. You either give in to the, cho- the trigger or you don't. The choice, the more you practice that, you get better and better. But it's all about recognizing it. So going back to the concept of how do we let go of conditional love and domestication, it starts by first acknowledging this is who I am. Like conditional love only sees what it wants to see. It wants to see that image by which we model. Ego is easier to understand as a function rather than a concept. The function of ego is to protect the illusion. What is the illusion? the model by which we condition ourselves or domesticate ourselves, that image of selves that we think is deemed lovable and acceptable and whatever it is that we say it's perfect. The function of ego is to protect that, to accept ourselves. This is who I am. That's the moment where we break ego because we, we let go of that need to live up to an image that doesn't exist. And unconditional love is the willingness to accept the whole of who I am, the whole yin and yang. So the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And that's where we're all at. It's like the fifth agreement is my favorite instrument to create a moment of clarity. And it's the moment you hold back your yes, you hold back your no, and you listen. When you listen, you're able to introduce scrutiny. But the thing is that you're already broke of cycle. The automatic yes and the automatic no, that, that habit that we create that makes us take things personal or make assumptions or condition ourselves automatically because we're so used to it, we're no longer thinking about it. It's an automatic reaction. But holding back that yes and no allows you to listen and give it scrutiny. If it survives your scrutiny, then you say yes. If it doesn't survive your scrutiny, then you say no. But that's what allows me to give uh, a moment of clarity, like the fifth agreement, uh, using doubt as an instrument to question all your beliefs. Is mm. it the truth? Yeah. Where did you learn it? Was it the truth ever? 
Yeah. And most importantly, how did it impact us? And that's it. But it starts with a willingness to see yourself, to acknowledge yourself, and most importantly, accept yourself.